possibilities. It all starts with the Australian Grand Prix. Raikkonen on the right, Alonso on the left, with his teammate Hamilton behind him. Behind Raikkonen on the right-hand side is Nick Heidfeld. We'll have five red lights when they go out for 2007. Formula One World Championship will be... Go! Nice start by both the McLarens. Look at Kibitzer attacking. Uh, Hamilton, we've got yellow flags at the back. Hamilton's had some manners put on by Kibitzer, but he comes around the outside. He's also gone around the left side. Stunning start by Lewis Hamilton up into third. got blocked off by Kubica, so he said, OK, I'll have a go around the outside then. And as they tripped over each other on the inside, he just took advantage beautifully. So even quicker than Lewis, he's got two laps less of fuel on board. And uh, there he goes, Alonso away. Well, surely he's going to come out in front of Lewis Hamilton, or is he? Yeah, Lewis Hamilton's only just coming into the pit straight. He's, Alonso's done enough there. Just taking on that little bit of extra fuel mid-race has made all the difference. There's the experience and the wisdom of a double world champion and his crew, of course. It's the challenge of Sepang. Fierce heat combined with a real racer's circuit. Sepang all set for round two of the Formula One World Championship. Second place, Alonso needs, it's a McLaren 1-2. 
competed in. He finished on the podium in Australia in third place. He is on at the moment to second place, but at the front, coming through, is uh, Fernando Alonso. What an absolutely awesome afternoon for him. Fernando Alonso, to his extreme pleasure, wins the 2007 Malaysia Grand Prix. What a massive blow struck by the McLaren team. And a phenomenal performance. Let's get a look at Lewis. Come on. What's Lewis? What's Lewis? In the desert winds of Bahrain, it's round three of the Formula One World Championship, and after Melbourne and Malaysia, are we set for another thrilling endorsement of the talent and the potential of Britain's Lewis Hamilton? Sunshine, a vast and enthusiastic Catalan crowd, and a grid that guarantees huge anticipation and excitement. The compelling ingredients of round four of the Formula One World Championship.
It's round five of the Formula One World Championship. It's also the most famous race on the Grand Prix calendar. An all McLaren front row for the Monaco Grand Prix. McLaren's 150th victory in Formula One. It's the 17th of Alonso's career. He wins in Monte Carlo, his second victory of the season. It's another second place for Lewis Hamilton. Terrific performance by him. And my five-year-old son said to me when I got back from Barcelona, Dad, I don't think Lewis is any good. Why not, son? I said, because he, he never wins. He always finishes second. I tried to explain, but uh, I'm sure one day Lewis's chance will come because uh, he put up a great fight here, but just fell short with Fernando Alonso. Trophy, he manages a smile, well he should. Another second place to add to this extraordinary debut season of Lewis Hamilton. Round six of the Formula One World Championship, episode six in the story of an amazing young Formula One talent. Britain's Lewis Hamilton is on pole position for the Canadian Grand Prix. When Lewis Hamilton opened his hotel room door this morning, he will have seen his own face staring up at him from the front pages of the Canadian newspapers. But he wins this race this afternoon, I think he'll be front page news all over the world. So can he do it? Can Lewis Hamilton convert his first pole position into that first victory? Anthony Hamilton was telling me half an hour ago that uh, his heartbeat reaches 180 degrees. He measured it in the last race at the start of the Grand Prix. It must be going through the roof now with his son Lewis on pole position. When the five lights go out, the Canadian Grand Prix will be underway. Lovely 
when Alonso rejoined the circuit, he was able to uh, miss him. And what is this? That's Alonso. Alonso running wide in turn one. So not only is he three quarters of a second at least slower than Hamilton, he's on the ragged edge as well. And uh, Alonso then second mistake of the afternoon in turn one. He's now 12.4 seconds behind Hamilton. This is uh, Alonso. Is that the same? He just did that a moment ago. Is that the same one? Oh, it's not. Look, he's let Massa through. So, for the third time today into turn one, Alonso's made a mistake, and this time it's really cost him again. Lap 25 of the Canadian Grand Prix, and we've got high drama here in Montreal. A car has gone off with the spiker of Adrian Sutil. He's fine. But uh, because of that, the safety car has been deployed, and it was deployed just after Lewis Hamilton made his first pit stop of the afternoon. We've just been given the signal that the pit lane is open, and that means that the other cars can come in and refuel. But before the safety car deployed signal was given, Alonso and Rosberg dived in. It was very, very close as to whether they got in before that signal was given or after. And it's critically important, as you can see the Ferrari coming in now, and you'll see lots of other cars coming in as well, because if you pit, uh, after the safety car deployed and the signal is given, when the pit lane effectively is closed, you will get a 10-second stop-and-go penalty. And this is costing Fernando Alonso major world championship points. They're having a look around the car. They can't work on it, they can't change tyres, can't refuel it, can't do anything. He just has to sit there. Here's another look at uh, Alonso, and uh, how he went wide, trying to get around Jarno Trulli. It was a fair, fair move there on both parts, but it's cost, it cost him a front wheel, didn't it, later on? What an adventurous afternoon. Well, he's rewriting the book of what is possible in Formula One. If he can do this after six races, what might he achieve in the future? Lewis Hamilton! on a dry racing track anyway. Absolutely sensational, faultless, brilliant performance by Lewis Hamilton. Alonso seventh, Ralph Schumacher getting the last point for Toyota. Indianapolis Motor Speedway where some great motorsport reputations have been built and motor racing history has been made and that's the prospect again today. Lewis Hamilton on pole position for the United States Grand Prix. Well, there hasn't been a British winner of the US Grand Prix for 24 years so can Lewis Hamilton change that particular piece of history? Huge crowd here at the Brickyard. You know the drill, when the five lights go out, the US Grand Prix will be go. Lewis Hamilton on the right, Alonso on the left, and it is go! Great fight by Alonso, he's got a terrific start, so has Hamilton, he's got a slight edge on him though. Alonso tucks in behind to protect the Ferrari from the Ferraris. Is Alonso going to try another one of his famous runs around the outside? No, he is not.
Brighton. Lewis Hamilton off the road. And Hamilton with every opportunity to make a new boy's mistake down there. Lost the wheel. Didn't help his line, held his nerve. Brake just in the right place. Pressing absolutely on the right amount at the right time. And that's what Hamilton did. Look at that for a good slipstream effect. But Hamilton parked his car on the inside and then braked beautifully. Well, that's what comes from being a racing driver from the age of eight. Both of these men were able to start karting at eight years old. They've got so much experience. Hamilton, 14 years of racing experience, and he's only 22. And a steely nerve. Now, we saw a little mistake from Alonso, who goes wide again. What's that all about? The blue flag flying across the road. And uh, Alonso just swerving across that. That's a little signal. It's a little signal to the pit wall, I would imagine. I don't think Fernando's emotions are fully under control in the car or out of the car at the moment. And that was a message. in the heart of the Burgundy countryside. It's the last time the Formula One World Championship visits the Circuit de Nevers at Manicourt. But will it be an occasion for another British celebration? Lewis Hamilton on the front row for the French Grand Prix. You can see there Fernando Alonso down in 10th place. Lewis Hamilton's closest championship challenger. But uh, gearbox problems yesterday and with Alonso took no part in the final part of qualifying the final ten on the grid. And it's go! Looks like a good start for Massa. Hamilton goes across to try and cover Raikkonen, who's got round him. Raikkonen is up in the second place already. Kubica is in fourth place. He got away where he started, but Hamilton has lost the place off the grid. And look at how aggressive Alonso is being around the outside. He looks like he's making up places. Here comes Alonso in the run-up to the Adelaide hairpin. And he just manages. Oh, it's an accident in front of him. He's gone around. He's been clipped from the left-hand side. Has that done any damage as he went around that Renault? Did it damage the car of Alonso? I think it might have been a BMW he was up against. He needs to clear Yano truly. He didn't quite manage to do so. So a bad start for Hamilton too. There is Alonso. His car, at least all four wheels, pointing in the same direction at the moment. Raikkonen wins in France. It's a Ferrari 1-2 ahead of Felipe Massa. Here comes Hamilton. He did what he could. He had a different strategy from uh, everybody else today. He three-stopped to everybody else's two. Didn't work out for him. Just didn't have the speed on race day that he had in qualifying. Nevertheless, he's played the percentage game here this afternoon. Six important points for him. Fernando Alonso, who started down in 10th place and finished seventh.
Silverstone is ready to inspire. Lewis Hamilton is ready to respond. And we're set for a British Grand Prix that could be one of the great Formula One occasions. It's round nine of the Formula One World Championship. Lights go off, the British Grand Prix will be going. Hamilton's greatest challenge begins now. Raikkonen right gets good light. Hamilton goes defensive and cuts him off. Makes one movement very, very forceful. Lewis Hamilton was taking absolutely nothing from Raikkonen. There was a, possibly an incident at the back, certainly a big puff of smoke, but Lewis Hamilton leads the British Grand Prix. Raikkonen is second. Fernando Alonso is third. These are crucial laps for Raikkonen. If he can do enough in the next couple of laps, he can take the lead from Hamilton. Needs to be a good stop take, Kravitz. Yeah, it was the tyre pressures. This is why Lewis has been struggling. The car's tyre pressures just weren't quite right. So the guys have adjusted the tyre pressures on the left-hand side only, James, which is interesting, obviously. Oh, he's gone too early! Lewis is keeping under control. Oh, he's lost a bit of time. They got all the fuel in, but uh, that was a couple of seconds longer than it should have been. First mistake in a Grand Prix for Lewis Hamilton. It's come at a critical moment. I think Raikkonen probably had enough speed anyway to take the lead off him, but that just shows how much pressure Hamilton is feeling. It's the first time he's put a foot wrong in a Grand Prix. Kimi is pitting, so uh, he didn't go too much further, but he was fast. Let's have a look at Hamilton's lap time. We've only got his out lap at the moment. Let's find out what his first flying lap was. Yeah, but well, he lost that little bit of time. The Ferrari wheelman gets to work. Wheel Chief man. mechanic Sam Baghetto on the wheel gun. Here's Hamilton in the complex. He's in fifth place at the moment behind Felipe Massa, who just flashes past us now under our commentary box. Hamilton is in Woodcut Corner, just starting onto the pit straight. There is Raikkonen. There is Hamilton. He gets up to speed slowly, but it looks like Raikkonen's done enough to take the lead, to take ultimately the lead. At the moment, it won't be. There are cars in front of them, of course. And yes, he is. He's in front of Hamilton. Be quick. Uh, like uh, Raikkonen was in these extra laps compared to Hamilton, but nevertheless, he's a huge threat today, so he could well uh, come out. He's switching to the softer tyre now for the middle stick of this Grand Prix. Where is Hamilton? Massa pits. Raikkonen comes through as Alonso able to lead from Raikkonen. It's going to be close. There is Alonso. Can he build up to speed before Raikkonen slips through? Can McLaren get back the lead of this race? They'll be side by side. Will they know? Alonso gets back in front of Raikkonen. So Alonso takes over the lead. Raikkonen, and that means Hamilton is going to third place. In second garage. They finished second in the World Championship last year. The second garage down, and the Ferrari boys go to work. Clearing out any debris from the radiator ducts. The hard tyres go on. Fuel is done. Four hands in the air. Everything is ready to go, and Raikkonen down the pit lane. Now we're going to find out whether he's good enough or not in that stint. Looks like he was more than good enough to me. Alonso comes down the main straight. You just saw him the right-hand side of your frames. Raikkonen entered the pit lane, the leader. He leads the pit lane, the leader. He has leapfrogged Fernando Alonso by staying out a few extra laps on the fuel, getting the quick laps in when the car was light. It's done the job. He's taken over the lead. We have a third different leader of the British Grand Prix, Kimi Raikkonen, and Raikkonen punches the air. He is back on form. It's a wonderful comeback. Two in a row then for Raikkonen, who wins the British Grand Prix at Silverstone. Alonso takes second. This is what I love about the British Formula One crowd. They know what they're looking at. They've seen a great victory. They're on their feet and applauding Kimi Raikkonen. Hamilton still making his way through bridge into the complex. It will take his nine straight podium out of nine starts. Tremendous reception for him as he crosses the line.
running race in sports day. But uh, they all count, don't they? Lewis Hamilton, big disappointment for him, but nevertheless, nine podiums in a row for him. Formula One World Championship live from the Nürburgring. The grid is formed. Lewis Hamilton is fit, and your commentators for the European Grand Prix: Martin Brundle and James Hunt. Surely, yes, he is. So's Massa. So is Alonso. Oh, he's gone off. Raikkonen's Raikkonen gone, gone off. Straight he's... on. He's missed it. He's missed the pit lane. That could cost him victory here this afternoon. Without a doubt, he's got to do another lap in these atrocious conditions on dry tyres and on such tiny moments to race his turn. Some people are going through and braving it for another lap. Lots of people into the pits. Massa, Alonso, Weber, Button, Kovalainen, Speed, Liuzzi. Ralph Schumacher, Davidson and surely Lewis Hamilton also pitting as well. Intermediate tyres going onto the Ferrari and Raikkonen has stayed up. So has Burtz and Trulli. Alonso is slow away, he's lost the place to Massa. And uh, well, it's chaos in the early stage of this race. I wonder if that was Winkelhock. Uh, yes, it is. And he's leading the race. He was the man who started from the pit lane, according to the computer. Marcus Winkelhock, well, I said it might turn out to be inspired, starting from the pit lane. And on his debut, the 27-year-old, in a spiker, is going to come through, is he, and lead a lap? Absolutely extraordinary situation. Kimi Raikkonen, meanwhile. Okay, let's establish the order as we've lost. That's uh, I think that's Button. Oh, no. Jensen Button was running in fourth place. He has gone off on intermediate tyres. So uh, clearly not even enough grip for, from those. Winkelhock leads, or does he? Spiker flies off the racetrack, Adrian Sotil. Is that Hamilton? It is Hamilton. Lewis Hamilton on lap three has gone off, along with the uh, well, Honda of Button and, and also the, uh, looks like the Spiker of Sotil. Did he hit Sotil, I wonder? No, they're aquaplaning now. There's so much water, the intermediates. Here comes another one. And this is going to get nasty. They're going to have to put the safety car out. What they're doing now is just aquaplaning off the racetrack. The intermediates will not clear sufficient amounts of water. And that is a super gurry that might just live for another day. And the rest of them are all deep in the gravel trap. And there'll be more in there yet, unless they slow down. But it's crawling pace you need. Otherwise, you're in a canoe. You're not in a Formula One car. Well. Anthony Davison should be able to get reversed and get out of there. Safety car has been deployed. I would not be running out there. Six cars then, stranded down at turn one. One of them is world championship leader Lewis Hamilton. The safety car has been deployed by race director Charlie Whiting. Understandably. Oh, it's a big one. 
That's one of the Toro Rosso spinning round. It's Tony Liuzzi who makes gentle contact with the tractor. And these are very dangerous moments for the... There is Lewis Hamilton who simply doesn't want to leave his car. You can't believe that he's out of this race. Looks like he may have kept the engine in, has he? Surely not. Yes, he has. Look at that. Well, he... He's That's allowed, incredible. He's allowed to be uh, put moved from a dangerous position. He's kept the engine running. We know those McLarens will tick over for apparently ever. And uh, as he's been moved out of a dangerous place, and we saw that happen with Michael Schumacher here, of course, right? quite controversially, actually, and uh, went on to get a result. So I think Hamilton will be fine there. Finkelhot leads them through, Massa second, Alonso third, Weber Coulthard, Kovalainen sixth, seventh Raikkonen, not particularly close to the back of Kovalainen, that Alonso. Alonso, here comes Alonso though, having a go as they come down towards Finkelhot, who doesn't really want to get involved in this, and uh, Alonso follows, here comes uh, Coulthard up the inside of his teammate, Coulthard takes the place away, so uh, he's got Finkelhot to get now, Massa rebuffs Alonso, but Alonso tries to go around the outside, Really struggling for grip in the McLaren, and he's going to go a lap down here. He is a lap down, so uh, a big problem for Lewis Hamilton. But if he can get a good drive through the final corner, and he's up alongside, he might be able to take Massa into Turn 1. The crowd are loving this one. Alonso is risking everything. He really, really wants this. He wants the victory. Here we go. Tucked up he is. Massa looks at his mirrors. Where is he? Is he on my left? Is he on my right? Alonso goes for it. Side by side for victory here at the European Grand Prix. Under braking. Massa's on the inside. Alonso holds it alongside. Don't touch. They don't touch. And Massa holds on to it. It's raining too much, that crucial World Championship point will have gone. But this is all about the World Championship too. Alonso so much more confident on the brakes, but the Ferrari seems better in the medium and high speed corners in the traction zone. So that's why the heaven is ebbing and flowing through the track. But Alonso overall has the much faster car. It's just that Massa is continually playing six touch wheels. Incredible. He's got away with it. He takes the lead. Alonso in the lead. He's through Fernando Alonso, bangs wheels with Felipe Massa. That is absolutely the kind of uncompromising stuff you expect from the two-time world champion. And after dominating this race, Felipe Massa drops into second place. He can't believe it. Alonso leads, Massa's second, Weber is third. For Fernando Alonso, and from a championship point of view, an absolutely critical one. Fernando Alonso wins the European Grand Prix. What an extraordinary race. What an extraordinary drive. Fernando Alonso climbs onto the nose of his McLaren. What an extraordinary victory. For a long, long time, it didn't look as though it might happen. He indicates to the cameraman that is, uh, I believe, where we went past Massa. He's not happy about it. They banged wheels as they went through. What a great communicator Alonso is. can also mean uh, the psychological tactics and I think Hamilton just wants to put down the marker he wants to be in front of his teammate pole position here is putting you in a, in a dominant position very difficult to overtake and I don't know what the rules are about their their tactics and fuel loads and stuff whether or not he gets uh, an advantage by being ahead of his team I don't know well at the moment Alonso having to wait again for the optimum moment to go out onto the racetrack but he's definitely putting the harder tires on there's Lewis Hamilton queuing up behind him and they've have they raised the lollipop to let uh, Alonso out? Yep, they want him out of there. No, Alonso's not getting on with it. Only a minute and 40 to go. He's, is he blocking Hamilton here? 
Is that a bit of a tactic within the team there to give Hamilton a bit of a headache? That's I think it might well be. That's really, really, that's really up to you now, Chubb. Yeah, James, that was a little bit naughty, I think. But uh, we'll see. He's got time to get round. Uh, I think that uh, we're going to see a real mighty... Uh, I don't know if he has, you know, David. I think he deliberately did that. I mean, it's a big thing to say about a two-time world champion, but the lollipop was raised a good five seconds before Alonso drove out. He knew Hamilton was queuing behind him, and he knew how critical it was. And I think that if this happens, that as we think it might here, that Hamilton misses the chance to complete, to do a qualifying lap, uh, that uh, I think there will be some stern words between the two of them. That is extraordinary. Checkered flag and Hamilton's missed it. Hamilton's missed it by four seconds. So he is not going to get a lap in. Alonso just made it through. And there will be some serious talk. What would you do if you were Lewis Hamilton and your teammate had just done that to you? I'm not Lewis Hamilton, James. But if I was me, I'd be very upset. Well, at the moment, he's still on provisional pole position, remember, on a 19-7. Alonso needs to find four tenths of a second. Meanwhile, Alonso faster than anybody in the middle sector. Is he going to take provisional pole position on this very controversial day? Drives like, yes, he does. He goes through on a 19-6. But there are going to be some serious words in the McLaren garage. We saw before that, remember, Alonso was indicating very agitated. Look at this. Well, I'm going to say, James, you know, that we thought they had some problems, McLaren and Ferrari, before this uh, event started, but there's going to be some serious fireworks now. That was tactics and time to perfection. Alonso really, I'm afraid, uh, stuffed it to Lewis, and the, the camp is split in McLaren. You can see it. Well, absolutely. If it wasn't split before, it certainly is now. I'm not entirely sure who that uh, gentleman is that Ron Dennis has got by the collar, but certainly I believe he's a Hispanic speaker. And Ted Kravitz, what can you tell us? You well, found wrong. That's Alonso's trainer. It's been a highly controversial build-up, but now it's time for cool heads and a composed attitude. There's a race to be won. Lewis Hamilton on pole position for what should be a highly competitive Hungarian Grand Prix. Round 11 of the Formula One World Championship. Focus has shifted back now to exactly where it should be. A passionate rivalry between two top-class racing drivers. Lewis Hamilton and Fernando Alonso there have maintained an uneasy but amicable relationship so far this year. While the McLaren team tried to insist it was a team error, but the stewards, and they're the ones who really count here, they decided that they didn't believe what Alonso had to tell them, and they moved him five places back on the grid. The five lights go out, 70 laps of the Hungarian Grand Prix underway. Hamilton on pole. It's go! Heidfeld gets a slow getaway, Heid Hamilton gets a good one. Reikkonen's alongside Heidfeld already. Looks like Rosberg's going to have a run down the inside as well. Heidfeld has dropped back to third. A great start by Reikkonen. Alonso tried to come down the inside, but was blocked by Rosberg quite uh, violently there. And he's dropped uh, back. You see, he's really struggling now to hold on. He's got a red bull alongside. He's managed to get in front of it. But that was a difficult start for Alonso. Down to 16. Here comes Alonso, though up the inside of Kubitzer, he really is on the move today, just showing when you really want to pass, you can. Kubitzer tries to fight back, Alonso has to make ground here, he has to make progress, and that's another beautiful passing move by Fernando Alonso. Almost here in Budapest, and it's Alonso now who is on the back foot once again. Raikkonen has challenged Hamilton all the way through. Hamilton had so much to deal with yesterday afternoon when Alonso put him, uh, blocked him from doing that final qualifying lap. But he said, I'll rise above it, and rise above it he most certainly has done. Lewis Hamilton takes his third victory in Formula One. He wins the Hungarian Grand Prix. Raikkonen's fastest lap of the race comes on the final lap, but it doesn't matter because it's all about Lewis Hamilton. Istanbul Park, a circuit that's designed to meet all the challenges of modern Formula One. Fast, demanding, but full of thrilling racing opportunities. The Turkish Grand Prix, it's round 12 of the Formula One World Championship. That's the starting grid then. Ferrari McLaren, Ferrari McLaren.
Hamilton on the right, Massa on the left. The third Turkish Grand Prix is go. Great start by Hamilton. He comes across from the BMWs. Kubica it is. has been very active off the line, but Raikkonen has got the jump. That is critical. Yeah. And we've got a spinner in the midfield. I think it's Jano Trulli in the Toyota, which has caused Desato to go off track. And look at the McLaren. You can see old there. Alonso side by side with Heidfeld, I believe it is. So Kubica has made the move, and Alonso has to yield. So that's two BMWs in front of Alonso. But critically, Martin, two Ferraris out front. And once again, that dirty side of the racetrack did for Hamilton. Uh, he was 8.3 seconds behind, so he needs to go an awful long way. We're on board what I suspect is a... It's Hamilton. Oh, no, he's got a damaged right front tyre. Hamilton with a right front puncher. That's going to rip the wing to bits. Not to mention what it's going to do to his, do to his championship lead. Lewis Hamilton sitting looking at a possible second place, but at worst third. is now looking at not scoring any points at all. And if he damages, you say, the front wing. Both the Ferraris go through a right smile, no doubt, on the lips of Fernando Alonso, his teammate, who has gone through as well. Lewis still has a fair distance to go to get back to the pits here. Well over a mile to go. And he needs to stay out of everybody's way as well. This is really going to... Oh, no, he's back in the pit lane. So he's not so bad Oh, he's going to hit the wall if he's not careful. Just kept it out. He'd almost be better putting his foot on the brake and stopping that crap, and that's what he's done now. And Alonso's there at the refueling ring. He'll clear it just about. This is going to put Hamilton back, fifth or sixth, Ted. To pit Alonso, they had to pit Alonso because they were worried about a safety car and it was time for him to come in. The mechanics having a look. The front wing end plate's completely destroyed. They can't actually get the front wing under. They've had to put a jack in the middle. The suspension on the right hand front side looks just about okay, but the aero on that car is shot to pieces. I'm sure the car is safe as he goes back out. I'm sure they've had a look at the suspension, but uh, certainly they've taken a few bits of the, of the uh, air off, as you say, Ted. And that's cost Hamilton. We'll find out exactly how many points it's cost him, but it's uh, not done him any favours whatsoever in the title race. Alonso pitted from the lead while well, just before that happened. But uh, didn't really hold Hamilton up at all. He rejoins his fifth place then, according to the computer. Felipe Massa takes his third victory of 2007, his second in a row here at Istanbul Park. It really is the lucky venue for Felipe Massa. There's Alonso, comes through in third. Hamilton fifth, just ahead of Heike Kovalainen. into the last five races that will decide one of the best Formula One World Championships for years and it's an all McLaren front row for the Italian Grand Prix here at Monza it's round 13 
bit by bit, he's eating into the lead in the championship of Lewis Hamilton, who finishes in second place. And this is a very, very tense championship battle now between those two men. been locked away in its equivalent of smoke-filled rooms in recent days the fresh air of the Ardennes is very welcome so too is the return of Formula One to the great circuit of Spa it's the Belgian Grand Prix round 14 of the championship So this first Japanese Grand Prix at Fuji for 30 years, we're going to start behind the safety car. The last time we had a Grand Prix starting in that situation was at Brazil back in 2003, if you remember. So it's been a while since we've had such treacherous conditions, but uh, everybody out there is a professional, particularly the safety car driver, and no one's going to take any unnecessary risks. Hamilton has allowed the safety car to uh, pull away from him. He is going to find his time. He is allowed to pick the moment. He's playing chicken with uh, Alonso. 
Jensen, so you're not allowed to overtake before the start finish line, of course, you can see. Jensen Button there, fourth, has got Mark Webber nibbling in his heels, and it's a question of when does Lewis put the hammer down, and what does Alonso do about it? Lewis is now gone, he's not allowed to overtake him, he's trying to force him into a mistake, a wonderful piece of gamesmanship by Lewis Hamilton, and away he goes, and now Alonso's right in his slipstream, he pulls out to have some sort of visibility as they go across the start-finish line, and we are racing at Fuji Speedway for the first time in 30 years, Lewis Hamilton leads them away, Alonso is second, Third is Heinfeld, fourth Button, fifth Weber, sixth Vettel, seventh Kubica, and eighth Fisichella. And the run down to the first corner is a lot more simple for Hamilton than it was in Spa two weeks ago. Alonso is behind him. That's oh, a McLaren. McLaren. We just saw a shot of Hamilton. I believe oh. this is Alonso. It is one of the two main championship contenders. Fernando Alonso has hit the wall. And that's in the middle of the track, uh, down in turn six, isn't it? Just yeah, right down into turn six. He's lost it coming out of five and hit the wall. He never, never approached the uh, wall at the turning point of six. He's gone straight in the wall. That's critical for the world championship. And uh, he's hit the wall very hard. He's dropped it on the exit of five. That's what's gone on there. Safety car has been deployed. There's a lot of debris from that McLaren scattered all over the track. But Hamilton will be getting the message as he leads this Japanese Grand Prix. 25 laps now away from uh, scoring 10 points that uh, would certainly move him into a very, very strong position in the World Championship because his main rival is out of this race, Fernando Alonso. Kimi Raikkonen is still in the hunt, but uh, he's dropped down to 12th place now after that extra pit stop in the Ferrari. And is uh, Alonso holding his arm? He's just taking his gloves off. No, he's just taking his gloves off. Uh, crucial for Hamilton. That gives him a big breathing space, providing he scores points today over Alonso going into those last two races. But we're five laps away from this reaching 75% distance, which is uh, quite often a, a crucial point if they do want... That's a big accident. If they do want to abandon the race. But, uh, yeah, he's at the plane on the exit of turn five. What an incredible drift. He wins the World Championship this year. He fully deserves it, just on the back of this afternoon. He has made no mistakes. It has been one of the most difficult and treacherous Grand Prix in the history of Formula One racing. And with a single mighty blow, he holds Alonso's charge. His World Championship is now within reach. That was the drive of a champion. Lewis Hamilton wins the Japanese Grand Prix. He takes the 10 points and an enormous lead into the final two races. And what an absolutely sensational performance. great achievement in sport is within reach of Britain's Lewis Hamilton. Can he become Formula One's first rookie world champion and the sport's youngest world champion? Can he do it here at the Chinese Grand Prix in what might yet be wet conditions in Shanghai where the commentators are Martin Brundle and James Allen. Thank you Steve, hello everybody. Well, I hope you're all enjoying your Grand Prix breakfast, your bacon sandwiches, pots of coffee. This is certainly one of those days which unites the nation. They say sport doesn't build characters, it reveals them. And that's certainly very true this season of Lewis Hamilton. He arrived in the first race, barely 22 years old, and revealed himself to be a man with the spirit of Bobby Moore, Steve Redgrave, Martin Johnson, and Jackie Stewart.
Ricky Tan into the pitch anyway. Go for his Hamilton. He goes straight on into the gravel track. Can he keep the wheel spinning? Can he get some momentum going? No, he can't. It's all going to get away from him. He's not allowed to get a push. He's in the pit lane. He need to get the get the get the um, need to get the rule book out here and see if he can get a pit push in the pit lane. He's trying to keep uh, the engine running. It's all getting away from him here. Raikkonen. The marshals don't seem to want to help him. And uh, well, the chance to be leave here as the world champion seems to have gone away. He was struggling like mad on those tyres out there, and uh, they didn't bring him in the McLaren team any earlier. Well, as things stand, this is going to turn the world championship on its head. He's the rookie. He wants to learn, he wants to have fun, but he wants to win. And he's set to make motorsport history. He's the champion. The rookie kid is starting to irritate him. He's got one more chance to put him in his place. Hamilton, Alonso and Brighton at the final round shootout that decides the world championship. Welcome to Interlago, Sao Paulo. The Brazilian Grand Prix poised to produce a sensational climax to this Formula One season. P16 at the moment. If the race stays as it is, he needs seven. If uh, Raikkonen takes the lead, he needs P5. If he can't find any gears, he gets on the radio. They obviously tell him to switch systems, and he's back up and running. down into turn four so Lewis then has exactly the position he needs for P15 
I really don't see anybody up until the BMWs wanting to get involved in the title fight with Lewis Hamilton. Well, that's a very, very good point, Martin, as he sides past his fellow Englishman. To uh, take what I think will be 14th place. Here we go. 12th place, for goodness sake. Weather's out, of course. Yes, so that's 12th fast. place for uh, Lewis Hamilton. Up the inside of Nakajima, very straightforward indeed, almost as if they were driving a different formula. Ever a risky move, very risky move, and he takes that risk. Oh my good lord, I can't believe he did that. That was from so far away. That was ridiculous. It's unheard of. It was majestic. And it was a good exit out of turn three. And then that favoured middle line anyway, that's where Lewis has been driving the racetrack. And it easily takes that position. Next up, Ralph Schumacher in the Toyota for a pass. Wow, that speed. So that's David Coulthard dispatched then by the end of the lap. But he's got an awful lot of catching up to do in the remaining 13 laps. I'm wondering if McLaren needs... Absolute des desolation down here in the McLaren garage. Mechanics shaking their head. They know they've probably lost this one. It's lap 63. Raikkonen leads the Grand Prix heads for the World Championship. And that's the championship situation as things stand. Look how close it is after 17 rounds of this World Championship. Surely one of the greatest championships in the sport's history. Raikkonen, though, is at the bottom of the hill. It's the big climb up the hill now that will make him the world champion of 2007. He came here third out of three. He's going away in the lead. He is going to be world champion. Kimi Raikkonen wins the Brazilian Grand Prix. His first victory here, the 15th of his career, by no doubt the most important. Massa finishes in second place. Alonso is going to come in third, and the dream is over for Lewis Hamilton. Kimi Raikkonen is world champion of 2007. The new world champion celebrates.